This is a style of art that continues to transform how humans express the natural world in relation to our own perspective in a fleeting moment. Changing like seasons, our lives are bound to flower for one day to wilt. So what is haiku? Well, haiku is an ever-innovative form of Japanese poetry. Haiku captures a moment or a feeling in a simple and direct manner, often dialing in on the beauty of nature, the changing seasons, or the expression of a fleeting moment in time. Defining of the haiku style is its unique three-line format, the first line having five syllables, the second line having seven syllables, and the third line also having five syllables. For example, here is a haiku by Yosa Busan, who was a Japanese poet during the Edo period known for his haiku poetry and sumie ink paintings. His haiku reads, Haru no umi, hina mosu notari, notari kana. While an exact translation is difficult, it can best be understood as something along the lines of, the spring sea waves gently swell, rolling in and out all day long. Notice how his haiku references nature and seasons in a unique and simplistic perspective. This is indicative of the stylistic approach that haiku offers. Okay guys, so I almost made a huge mistake right now in the haiku video. I'm in the middle of editing the video and I sent it to my friend in Tokyo and she said that I was missing a key and a major part of understanding the haiku writing style. That important part was kigo. And so obviously I asked her, well, what is kigo? I had never heard of it when researching for haiku. She mentioned that kigo are specific words that relate to a respective season. Essentially, they are just seasonal words. There are kigo for spring, kigo for summer, kigo for autumn, and kigo for winter. It is also important to note that you can't just create your own kigo. There are specific kigo and a fixed list of these special seasonal words. Some spring kigo words are haru for spring, haru no umi for spring sea, which is the kigo that we saw earlier in Yosa Busan's haiku just a few moments ago, kawazu for frog, sakura for cherry blossom, and ume, which are plum blossoms, among many more. Some summer kigo words are natsu for summer, tsuyu for a rainy season, minami, wait, not that minami, this minami, for southern wind, semi, which means cicada, and fuji, which means wisteria. Some autumn kigo are aki, or autumn, tsukimi, which means moon viewing, and koyo, which represents the leaves changing colors. And finally, some winter kigo are fuyu, for winter, samushi, for cold, yuki, which means snow, usagi, which means rabbit, and kareha, which means dry leaves. All of these are just a few examples of the many different kigos that exist for the different seasons. And honestly, researching kigo for this segment has made me even more interested in the subject of kigo. And honestly, I think I might make a whole video about kigo itself. So maybe expect that coming this spring. Once again, I just wanted to thank my friend in Tokyo because she really helped me understand kigo and how it plays an important role in shaping haiku. Now let's take a look at the significance of haiku and its history. Haiku's style of poetic expression has since spread globally for its ability to evoke emotions or create vivid imagery in the reader's mind. Haiku has a strong cultural significance in Japan and has been an important part of the country's literary and artistic traditions for centuries. The origins of haiku can be traced back to the hoku, which is the first verse of a linked verse poem called renga. Over time, the hoku evolved into a standalone form of poetry that is what we know today to be haiku. Such innovations in culture and approach to literature grew to popularity during Japan's Edo period. The Edo period itself was a time of internal peace, political stability, and economic growth under the Tokugawa shogunate. This golden age saw a dynamic advancement in Japanese culture as seen through kabuki theater, ukiyo culture, new interest in studying western sciences, and of course, haiku. During the Edo period, some of the first haikus were written by Matsu Obasho, who was a poet widely regarded as the master of haiku and one of the greatest poets in Japanese history. Basho traveled all throughout Japan as he conveyed his experiences and encounters with nature through his haikus. Here is one haiku that Matsu Obasho created. Haru mo yaya, kishiki to tonou, tsuki to ume. To understand this haiku, I turned to my friend in Tokyo. She gave me a great cultural understanding of the haiku saying, quote, Long and severe winter had passed, and plum trees have started to bloom. It's enough to feel the arrival of spring, in addition to the moon coming out. It seems to prepare the arrival of spring already in the air." End quote. In this haiku, the kigo are haru, tsuki, and the main one being ume. She also mentioned that spring was special for the people in this era, so there are a lot of haiku related to spring, 
or feeling elated. Similar to Yosabu-san's haiku, Matsuo Basho's haiku expresses a particular experience of a fleeting moment in time. To me, Basho's haiku gives a recognition of the complexities of the natural world and an appreciation for the many fleeting moments that make up life. Basho's haikus capture moments of intense feeling and his work help establish haiku as a distinct and meaningful form of poetry. Now that we covered the basic of haiku and how it plays an important part in Japanese history and culture, let's take a look at the haikus that I wrote myself. The first rule to writing haikus is its unique three-line format and the 575 syllable pattern. If you are writing haikus in Japanese, remember to include kigo or seasonal words. One way to begin writing haiku is to write about the current moment. Otherwise, you can think back to a special moment that you experienced where you felt an intense connection to nature, the world, or the fleeting moment itself. Of course, haiku can be written about anything, but is often written about intense feelings, nature, or the changing seasons. Remember, it's not about what haiku means, it's about how it makes you feel. Haikus can be written in any language, so I chose to write one in English and two in Japanese to show you how haikus work. My first haiku is the haiku that I wrote in English. Changing like seasons, our lives are bound to flower, for one day to will. And this is my second haiku, which is in Japanese. Hanaga saku, raigetsu mata haru, tanjo no toki. The kigo in this haiku are haru and potentially hana, which often refers to cherry blossoms in the context of haiku. This haiku can be understood as flowers will bloom, spring again next month, a time of birth. And my third haiku is nami no neto, oria kanakuki. Natsu no kibun. The kigo in this haiku is natsu, or summer, and the haiku can be understood as the sound of waves, a calm air, a feeling of summer. I don't know guys and girls, do you think I'm ready to be a haiku professional? Let me know what you guys thought of my haiku in the comments below. It can be challenging to write haiku for the first time, so I'm sure as I keep writing more, I will get better. While haikus are often seen as an art form that requires discipline and skill to convey such intense emotions in a short and simple manner, anyone can begin writing their own haiku. Writing haiku can be a means of reflection and expression. Equally as important, there are great modes of creative writing and communication. Writing haiku has the potential to have positive impacts on mental health, and it can provide a sense of connection with the world around us, nature, and the emotions and experiences of others. I encourage you all to begin writing haiku yourself because it can be calming, helping to reduce stress and anxiety in this fast-paced world that we live in. A study conducted by students at Harvard Medical School found that poetry has been shown to improve mood, memory, and work performance. I believe this is also very much the case for haiku. So what could go wrong writing haiku? Why not give haiku a try, especially since so many people give credit to it reducing stress and clearing the mind of the distractions of our world. I'll keep you updated on my haiku journey through community posts and I hope to see all of you inspired to write your own haiku and please share them with me in the comments below. Soon, I want to dive into other topics including wabi-sabi, a Japanese perspective on the impermanence and beauty of life, as well as ikigai, a Japanese approach to helping you find the meaning in life. And if you stuck around to the very end, I want to thank you very much because this haiku project video took me so much time filming, editing, and proof checking that I could get the best information about haiku for you. So if you enjoyed this kind of video, I hope to see you around again soon. Good luck on your haiku journey and thank you for watching.